just that's going to be fine. Could I just have you, uh, for the sake of the viewers, when they see this, if you just do a little thing, say, you know, I'm Bob Jones, oh, and uh, I started to ask you. <laughs> yeah, and that way, when the video first comes on, they'll kind of know what you're looking at. Okay. And uh, we're just at a meeting of the Spring Hill Arts Center, and we have a few uh, individuals tonight that are going to talk about their artwork. I'd like to say a few words about this first, you know, something like that. Just somebody write that down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything like that, you know. Yeah. So, uh, Hello, I'm Bob Jones, and I'm a member of the Spring Hill Art Center, and we're here tonight to preview some of the artwork of some of our members. And we'll start with mine. This is a project that a gentleman came to me, and it's of Miles Davis. And if you've ever seen any of Miles Davis's pictures, he always looks like he's really, really angry at the world. And he's very intense, and that kind of fits my artwork. It's very intense, very tedious, but the gentleman, when he came in, he says, I want this part right here. So I looked at it, and I went, yeah, that'll be fun to do. But he came back 30 minutes later, and he said, oh, I forgot to tell you, I want this piece here. And when I took a look at it, I went, holy cow, look at all the wrinkles in this. But anyway, it became a labor of love for me and uh, there's about almost eight days of work in this. And his, these little wrinkles in here, uh, a lot of it I did with a pen, but I also did it with an X-Acto knife to, to get that age look. And uh, like I said, it was a commission piece. And I called him three times and told him it was ready. And uh, the fourth time, he says, I think I've changed my mind. <laughs> so I'm stuck with eight days of work with no pay, but I got a great piece here, and I've had a lot of people that's wanted to buy this. The uh, technique I use is pen and ink are done with a mechanical pen. There's lots of lines, dots, hatching. I'm basically not painting with a brush, but I'm painting with a pen. It's the same technique to get the form and the shape of the face. And uh, the background here is done with uh, brush and ink, the large areas, but the rest of it's all detail work with a pen, a uh, very fine pen. And that's it. I'd like to introduce Wayne Hagen. He's one of our members. Am I looking into this camera? Yes. What's this camera here? Yeah, she's just pretending. She's pretending. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Julian Wayne Hagen, a member of SHAC, Spring Hill Arts Center, and glad to be here tonight uh, at this meeting and then uh, with the video. And uh, glad to be a part of Nashville New Zine. I found out about it a few months ago, and I'm one of the artists that's posted on the site. Um, my work actually started when I was a child. Uh, my father inspired me to draw when I was a little boy. Popeye, of all things, in front of the television. And later in my life, I attended college at Valdosta State College, now University in South Georgia. And uh, went to school at the same time that I was uh, doing work as a broadcaster, radio broadcaster, and actually left my schooling to pursue my broadcast career. And that was over 30 years ago, uh, actually about 35 years ago. And so back in the fall of 2005, I started painting again after not painting for all those years. Uh, when I was in school, uh, Claude Monet, one of the famous French Impressionists, was one of my favorites. And so when I started painting again, I, I wanted to do more of a, an Impressionism style of painting more of what I would call a modern Impressionism style. So that's what I do now. Uh, I started work on canvas, but I uh, recently transitioned over to uh, more of a hard panel, which this, is, this piece is on. Um, a company out of Texas, Ampersand, makes this particular kind of a panel that's made from a birch type wood, and it has a, a hard surface. Um, in my work in media, I travel from Spring Hill, where I live, uh, over to Smyrna every day, 
uh, which is 43 miles. And I, over the last few years, I've gotten to know the lay of the land pretty good. These two trees in this particular painting are actually two trees in a field out together. And it caught my eye one day and I pulled off the edge of the road, took a photograph of it and decided to paint it. And of course, uh, at the time of the year, everything was dead, brown, gray. The rolling hills that we have around here obviously don't look anything quite like what I put in this painting. But my decision was now to paint with more light, color, and texture. And if you look close at this painting, you'd see a lot of texture. I don't use brushes. I use painting knives and I'm able to get a lot of the uh, technique of the texture by using the knives. Um, just, uh, you know, want to encourage anyone that uh, is any age, whether you're young or older, to not put your brushes away like I did, but pick them up again and then be a part of a group like the uh, Spring Hill Art Center. Uh, thank you again, Nashville New Zine, for all you're doing. Uh, God bless you, and I'm looking forward to many more artists being a part of what you do. Our next guest artist is Mark Ivey, and he's going to discuss his work. Hi, I'm Mark Evan Ivey. Um, I am a member of SHAC and a soon to be a member of the Nashville New Zine. And um, I guess my background is I was born in Alaska. Um, uh, till I was 10, moved to California, and, and certainly started artwork in Alaska. My mother painted and um, the John Nagy um, TV series. I got the charcoal pencils in the book and drew the um, cones and made them into hay fields and did all that. And it was basically very formative for me. Um, in California, I uh, uh, studied design, industrial design, uh, became an industrial designer and did fine art as well on the side. Um, I transitioned um, at one point from design. I worked for uh, Design Works USA, which is owned by BMW. We did a lot of contract work, so it was always varied. We all did concept sketches and all the way through making models. But it didn't give me the freedom I wanted to do in my fine art. So uh, when I had the opportunity, uh, I transitioned into doing some fine art. Um, and so uh, what I would normally do is watercolors. And um, what I'd like to talk about today is this piece here, which is a colored pencil piece. Um, so I'm, I really enjoy the outdoors from being in Alaska and uh, really appreciate that. But um, I also, uh, I was in Mexico on a film. I teach sword fighting. Um, to the actors and train the doubles, or a double and, and train the actors. Um, and this lady was in a town called San Miguel de Allende. And she was uh, uh, asking for money for food. She was a street beggar. Um, and uh, she'd say, Una, un peso por comida, por favor. And it just struck me, her face was just this very intense person who had this history just written right there. And um, so I, I asked her if I, I really loved her face, and I really I wanted to take her picture. And she said, 10 pesos, which is 10 pesos, and it's basically a dollar. So I gave her 100 pesos, which is $10. For them, it's a lot of money. They make that in a week. And so um, I took a couple pictures, and that was all I could do. That was, she's, she was done with me then. But, um, I really enjoyed her, her face, and it's just very intense. You could read that, that sense of life there that she, she lived. And normally I work in the watercolors, but I, I felt it lent itself, her, her uh, as a subject, lent it more to doing colored pencil. So um, my challenge was to use the colored paper and bring the colored pencil and really pop her face, which was the... Uh, uh, the most intense part was certainly her eyes. And um, so my challenge in this piece was I, I wanted to foreshorten her and bring her head up a little more. She had all kinds of cars and stuff behind her, so I changed the background. But um, my intent was really to capture her emotion and her history and her face. And I, I, I felt that the colored pencil really kind of uh, did that more so than the watercolors could. Um, I feel that... Um, 
I, I could certainly make it pop a little more. I think, I think I should have used a little bit lighter paper and then made it uh, darker on the face. But um, it was, it was uh, quite a challenge to bring the color of the paper through and, and make it work. But I really enjoyed the piece and, and certainly uh, her contribution. Our next featured guest is Shirley Barker. Hi there, I'm Shirley Barker, and I am a member of the um, Spring Hill Arts Center. Uh, and what I've got brought you to here today is one of the pieces that's very passionate of mine. Uh, it's a, from a photograph, um, of course, as you can tell, it's a motorcycle. Um, my, um, gosh, my background's pretty obscure, to say the least, and we don't really need to go there, but what I love about art is that it brought me to a place um, in my life that um, just made me feel good about who I was as a person. And uh, art I owe a lot to, um, you know, the things that I've been able to accomplish today. And what strikes me about uh, painting these motorcycles is that I like to dabble in a bit of what I call realism. Uh, but it, yet within chrome there's this reflective uh, quality uh, that's a bit more abstract at times. And to me, it's like when you look at something and you see the reflection, it really tells you who you are inside, you know, a lot of us. And that's kind of where this all uh, came from. And so um, I was an avid biker. I used to hang out, do a lot of bike rallies, and just kind of like got bored sometimes. So I started taking photographs of motorcycles, and voila, you know. So I've got a tremendous amount of uh, reference material to go through. Um, so this happens to be an Evo bike, um, of which we just kind of zoomed in, and I just love all the different colors and dance and just play around with the, the color. It is an acrylic. Um, motorcycles are my main, um, you know, uh, subject of choice. I do dabble a little bit in um, landscaping and things like that. But um, the opportunity came to me through the Spring Hill Arts Learning Center uh, to open the Spring Hill Arts Learning Center through Bob, uh, and he asked me to do this wonderful project. And really, that's what I'm more interested in talking about uh, in this particular interview, because it's near and dear to me to educate uh, a lot of the community through art. I think, I honestly believe that with art is how a community thrives and how a community grows. And I've just gotten a lot of great response uh, from the area, and a lot of the members here of SHAC they're joining forces together uh, to teach, you know, a lot of their expertise and a lot of their talents to uh, young children, adults, and even seniors. It's near and dear to my heart because it took me out of a place that just was not a real fun one to be in. And today I can honestly say that I'm here doing this kind of stuff and staying out of trouble. And that's what art is to me. I guess it sounds kind of silly, but that's just where I'm at. And um, I don't know what else to say, but um, go ahead. <laughs> Our next member is Charles Snook. He's a founding member of the Spring Hill Arts Center, and I'd like to introduce him to everyone. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for coming here and bringing the, your TV program to us and let us participate in it. I have to introduce my wife, Lunella. For years, I painted the main picture and she did the backgrounds and a couple of years ago we kind of got away from doing stipple type backgrounds and doing them a little different now but she's still right there with me every day <laughs> working on I uh, went to North Texas University and to Lamar University and I ended up with two degrees mechanical engineering and commercial art I had a show in Port Arthur, Texas, where we grew up, uh, Lamar University is in Beaumont, and in Port Arthur, Texas, where I grew up, they have a, a, a big gallery there, and they asked me to put on an art show. And so I did, and fortunately, I, <laughs> I didn't leave early. I kind of hung around and didn't sell very much, hardly anything. And there was one man that was still hanging around the gallery. And I had a brother-in-law who says, do you know who that is? And I said, no, I don't. And he said, this Dr. Buchanan. He said, go talk to him. 
and and see if you know if there's anything you can do. So I and it's now getting late. So I went over and I started talking to him, and he he said uh, these butterfly pictures, and there were I had about 20 of them in the gallery. He said, I'll take that one, that one, that one, and he went through he went through 11 of the butterfly pictures, and he said, now how much do I owe you? And it was $21,000, and he wrote out a check. And he was just a great doctor. He was a pathologist. And uh, unfortunately, oh, and he was go going to build a butterfly garden. He had already experimented quite a bit in raising butterflies. And he was going to build a big garden in, in Port Arthur. And he wanted these paintings to decorate the building for his butterfly garden. Unfortunately, about a year and a half later, he got Lou Gehrig's disease and died. But before he died, he gave me all the pictures back, <laughs> which was kind of unusual. People don't usually have that happening to them. But since then, we've been painting the butterflies. This one right here, by the way, this has iridescence, this one butterfly here. And it will actually, when you get the light on it right, it'll light up. And we've gone from butterflies now, we're doing, we went to a, a, a period of tall birds. And we have a number of tall birds that are all four feet tall and two and a half feet wide. And just about the herons, the egrets, all the different birds. I would love to invite every one of you to my house. It's wall to wall pictures. And, uh, this is the kind of one of the latest we've gotten into is this kind of swirly background and then we'd use iridescent paints to make one part of the picture light up and we've we've really gotten good coverage from these and a lot of acceptance from the public i've taken the pictures and I do them in series, and we have 12 different series, but I've done frogs, and each one of them, it tells about the frog on the back, where it's from, and a little information about it. And we, we offered these in our gallery down here. And that's pretty much it. Where'd Bob go? <laughs> Where's Bob when I need him? I'd like to thank all of our guest artists tonight for being here and special thanks to Nashville New Zine and hope to see other artists being interviewed. <laughs>